then the blue part's also x plus y. This is really tricky, and it's very subtle. But here it is again. Push a bunch of symbols arbitrarily. Guess that you're choosing to look at a symbol. Pop those symbols off the stack. Now the stack's empty. Start pushing symbols again non-deterministically, guessing when to make a mismatch. Find a mismatch. At that point, pop the symbols that you have off the stack as you read the rest of your string. If your string empties out when your stack is empty, then you know that the middle part here, consisting of the popping of the first set and the pushing of the second set, was the same as the pushing of the first set and the popping of the second set. That they equal, not only are they the same, but they equal the length of the string. That means the middle section is half the length. That means they are separated by the right amount. The trick in this problem is not to focus on counting two things, but to focus on counting one thing. What we're really counting here is half the length of the string and making sure that these two things are separated by it. I want to give you this as an example, not to say, oh, look how hard these things can be, but more, here's a complicated idea. Show me how to do it with the machine. Even if you don't get this idea in detail exactly why it works, you should be able to still simulate the pushes and the pops and the guessing by using this as a model and just mimicking this model and, and fiddling with it. And then if you don't get that, then ask me and I'll help you figure out how to do this. But this is one of the questions on your assignment three that you'll get next week. Yeah, question. Uh, I mean, obviously in a linear sense, this is up, down, up, down. It's not that big of a deal. But translating it into one of these, I don't really understand what you did with this previous machine well enough to translate that. I might. I might be able to do it. But it is a little bit confusing to me, um, I guess, some of the transitions you're making. Um, I guess how you know when you're doing what. Um, I, I mean, I realize that when you make one of these machines, you're defining a language, and so you don't have to know when you're doing what. But you didn't, I, I just sort of felt like. Well, you do have to know when you're doing what. It's just that it's non deterministic. So if there's a lot of things this machine could do, and only one of them is going to get the right answer, right. presumably. Right, if you do the wrong thing, it's not in the language. But no, if, well, if you do the wrong thing, it still may be in the language. You have to keep trying to try to do the right thing. If you can find one way to get to a final state, then that string's in the language. You can find 20,000 ways not to get there, and that doesn't mean it's not in the language. The only time it's not in the language is when all the ways you try don't get to a final state. Then it's not in the language. In non-determinism, something's not in the language if every single path that you try doesn't get you to a final state. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. you've got this union situation. I mean, I don't, maybe, I, maybe I just need to look at the. Uh, you know, I think what, what you should do is look at this, think about it, and then I'll go with you through it on an exam. Maybe it's good for everybody to see an example maybe on this one. Should we do that and then quit today, do one more example? Here, let, let me tell you where we're headed with this before I just quit right off the bat. Uh, the next thing we need to do is I need to show you how, how any how any uh, context-free grammar can get con converted to one of these machines. Any context-free grammar can get converted to a non-deterministic machine. And I'll show you that next time. The other direction, that any machine can get converted to a grammar that's uglier and longer and harder, and I'm going to skip it. And I'll just leave it for reference in the book if you want to look at it. But it's true, and that thing's equivalent. I will do the one-way direction, and we'll need Chomsky normal form for going from grammars to machines. And it's not too long. That's about a half an hour of a lecture or so but too much to do today after this detail. Uh, that comes next, and then pumping lemma after that, and then some issues about closure and decision algorithms about these things. So we, we got about two or three more lectures on this topic. Yeah, question? Back to the pumping lemma? A different pumping lemma, a new one, a new one. <laughs> it's better. <laughs> it's, it pumps twice. It's got biceps instead of just one big muscle in the middle. <laughs> yeah. A quick question about this. If, you, if you're comparing the first, uh, symbol or the last symbol, does that mean you only have one transition of push and pop? If you can, oh yes, like, yes. If, if you want to. So like the first part of the hat, first string would then be like right on the middle, so it only transitions Yeah, so, so Donna's got a good question. She's saying, what if these two symbols, <laughs> what if these two symbols are at the beginning end of the string, where they could be? Right, I mean, it's completely possible that Oh, no, they can't be. No, no, both like beginning and middle. Like, like here. What if they're, you mean if they're here and here? Yes. 
Well, Donna wants to know, what if the only two symbols that mismatch are the first symbol and the beginning of the middle? Or the last symbol before the middle and the last one. Or that. In, in this situation, you don't push any symbols at all. And you don't pop any symbols at all. The whole thing is the Y section. This is all the Y, so you're and this is. You're pushing and popping symbols, just not X's. You said you're pushing no symbols at all. And popping you don't push symbols. any symbols for the for this first section. Oh, for the first section. Okay. For the first section, you don't push any symbols okay. because you have a non-deterministic choice here every single time, whether you're going to push a symbol or whether you're going to read it. Okay. If you choose to read the first symbol and then move on to the next stage, mm -hmm. you don't end up pushing anything at that stage, okay. and the popping ends up popping nothing. Okay. You, and you end up making a lucky guess, and you just check that this half equals that half. And vice versa, if you do it the other way, then you push everything the first stage, and there's no Ys to push. So if it's the first symbol, but you're just still going to start pushing first, because you have to, there's nothing there. No, you don't. You're pushing Ys. You're pushing Ys, but you're pushing something. He's saying right. you're pushing no symbols. Right. You know, I, write, I, I say here pushing Xs and, and popping Xs, and pushing Ys and popping Ys. You actually can use the same symbol. It's just that you're likely going to push and pop different numbers of these symbols. That's why I use the different, yeah. I didn't mean different symbols you're pushing. You could use different symbols, but you don't need to. You just are going to push the same symbol different a number of times. You get it. All right. I think it might be worthwhile to do this for a second. Erase my pretty color picture and do an actual computation of this machine on a non-even length palindrome, just to show how the computation works. OK? We do that, and then we'll, then we'll call it a day. Uh, well, no. Possibly, but Here are two strings. This string really is an even length palindrome. Right? This string is not an even length palindrome. This machine should not be able to accept this. This machine should be able to accept this. So, first let's try to see if we can find a way for this machine to accept this. Not every way is going to work. Let's see, because you know how this machine is supposed to work, whether you can make the right choice without having to guess. So right at the beginning, you want to go down here or here? No. If you go up here, you will not accept. That's a bad choice. It's not odd length. So go down here. Now we see a 0. Do you want to push that 0, or do you want to say, I saw a 0 move to this stage? Picking, you say, I saw a 0 move to this stage, means you're hoping that these two mismatch. They don't mismatch. So you better not go there. I'm going to use some color here, if I can. Use red. We haven't used red today. I'm going to write in red what we actually do. We go here. We go here. Now I've seen this 0, and I stored it on the stack. The stack now has an x in it. Now we see this 1. What do you want to do? Don't go through again, because that one is the mismatch, and it's the only mismatch. If you don't go down now, you're dead. You'll never make it to the final state. And now we see a 0. What should I do? Just ignore it. Read through it. And now I see another 0. What should I do? Ignore it. And now I see this 0. That's the one I want to mismatch. And now I'm hoping to God that I got exactly one thing left in my stack. I see it. I pop it. It's gone. And now I got no more symbols left. So I can go over here. There's no other computation that would have gotten to a final state here. There are other strings that there were more than one that can get to the end. If there are more than one mismatch, there's lots of ways to get there. But there only has to be one to accept the string. And in this string, in this string, there are no ways. Try anything you want from here. Make any guesses you want. Try any of the errors that are legitimately there. You will never get this string to make this machine end you up in here. And therefore, we reject this string. Okay, and that's worth experimenting with a little.